everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. We're back again with the Copart M3. If you guys haven't seen the introduction of this car on this channel and all the information of how much it costs and all of the issues with it, that video is also linked in this series, it's the first one in this series. But today, we're gonna actually start working on this M3. So there's a couple of things that we need to take care of right now because it's gonna be, just be a waiting game in terms of parts. So one thing that we are doing on this car, as you'll see in this video, is we're gonna start doing the SMG to six speed manual conversion. So in order for us to do that, we need to send the bell housing in to a machine shop so that way they can machine out all the stuff that needs to be machined. And I'll go more into detail later with all of this stuff. But for right now, we're just gonna pull this transmission off and get all that ready and sent out. All right, so first things first, we're gonna be tilting this engine back to remove the transmission. So I'm gonna remove this fan clutch assembly. We need to remove all this shroud and all of this as well since we're gonna be working on the engine later on. But for right now, I'm just gonna pull this fan off and just let it sit inside of here. That way when the engine tilts back, it doesn't mess anything up. Well, let's see if we're gonna have to pull out the big guns or if this will do the trick. Haha. -ha. Now this is something that's overlooked quite a bit um, whenever people are pulling transmissions off, especially with rear wheel drive cars that have a fan clutch. A lot of people forget to unhook the fan clutch when they're gonna tilt the engine back, even in replacing the transmission mounts. When, you're, when you let that transmission tilt back, the whole front of the engine actually tilts up. So if your fan clutch is attached to your water pump, when you're tilting that transmission back, this section right here will start rubbing up against this fan shroud, and then you risk breaking some of these blades, breaking the shroud. There's a lot of risk associated with that. That's why I like to go ahead and remove this before I even start. Just in case, you know, when, once you start getting in the groove of things with the car up on the lift or underneath the car, you kind of forget about a couple of things that are up here that you might have to disconnect. So I like to start off by doing that. And before all of this, of course, you want to unhook the battery. We already have that, the positive and negative uh, unhooked, just in case. So this is actually going to stay unhooked for quite a bit because we're doing a lot of stuff on this car. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is just going to require most of this stuff to be disassembled. So this car is going to be here for a while on the lift. So I might actually go ahead and remove this fan shroud as well. There's some fasteners that are easier to get from underneath. But for right now, I'm just going to remove this top section. And we actually have quite a few in-depth videos of all of this disassembly. So we'll just have that whole E46 M3 playlist linked down there as well. And that's going to go over all of the repairs that we're doing more in depth. And you know, this video is more of a vlog of us just doing all of the work on here. But we are going to try to make a couple more in-depth videos. Uh, for example, that SMG conversion, we'll try to get a little bit more in-depth on that in one of these videos. But we're going to try to keep, you know, up to date with all the progress that we do make on here. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to do that doesn't really, you know, there's not much of a need for a DIY for it. But it's something that just needs to be done on the car. Some of these fasteners are actually pretty tricky. But for us, someone's already messed with it and broke this one off. So this one just came right out. This one is actually still on there. That is one thing that I hate about the E46 M3 fan shroud design is how they put this upper radiator hose through this section of the fan shroud, which just makes it a little bit more difficult. If you ever want to remove this, you got to take off the upper radiator hose and you know open up the cooling system for that. It's a bad design, honestly. And it, you know, on my cars, what I usually do is I usually cut out this section right here just cut a little slit. That way, whenever you do remove the fan shroud, you can pull it off. Well, if I'm being honest, my car doesn't even have the fan shroud on it. <laughs> but when it did, I did that. Another thing I like to do is unhook the secondary air pump just in case if you know this is too dry and brittle the added stress of tilting that engine and transmission back won't break the actual hose. Right, anything else? Ah. 
how the starter is disconnected. Let's get the rest of this shroud off. That's the one that you got to do from underneath that last one. Yeah, we'll just lift it up and do it. Coming back down. Oh, and your fan clutch too. Come on. All these spider webs. I'll have them babies on here. All right, so now we're taking off this reinforcement plate, the rest of the plastics. That way we have the exhaust exposed. Well, technically exhaust is kind of exposed right now, but we need to take all that stuff off anyways. So we're just gonna do it. Basically preparing it to get a lot of work done. Pretty much all the maintenance that hasn't been done, we're gonna do it all along with some mods. If I had a more powerful impact, I wouldn't have to do it by hand first to loosen them. Talking to you, Milwaukee. But we'll stick with our rigid for right now. Ooh, those are rusty. That's gonna be fun to take out. So this is something that's actually only on the M3s, is all these other covers. So the non-Ms don't have all these extra covers. Assuming it's for aerodynamics, you know, actually lets some air up through here to cool the transmission as well. But it makes it harder for all the disassembly. I was trying to escape that rusty nut right here because don't want to risk breaking that if I don't have to. Oh, that actually came out. So here's the SMG transmission. You could tell by all these lines. Everything else is actually exactly the same on the manual versus the SMG. The only difference is all of the hydraulic stuff. And we're gonna be removing all of that. Okay, I'll take that back. That's not the only difference. Also these sensors that are down here. The normal manual transmission doesn't have that. So if you didn't notice it already, this car came with a Dynan exhaust, or at least the Dynan muffler. Everything else is stock, but that's probably the only modification on this car 
besides the e-brake handle is that Dyna muffler. Let it go. All right, hold. There you go. Getting all these drive shaft bolts off of the differential side because I've got the car in neutral. So since SMG, if you leave it in first gear before we start doing all this stuff, you can't get it back into neutral unless you hook the battery and do all that stuff back up. So that's one thing that I forgot to mention in the beginning. You should definitely have it in neutral before you actually start taking everything off. Yep, bring it down. Hold on, let me put a bag on there. Now we're pretty much at the stage where we're going to start taking off all the SMG hydraulics. So honestly, there's not really any good way to go about doing it. You just got to do it. Ideally, you want to try to get some of that SMG fluid out from the reservoir. I didn't do that. I'm just going to let it drip out from over here. We're not reusing the SMG system at all, so we're not really too worried about it. Anybody that's going to buy any SMG components, it's not going to be those lines. It's really going to be the gear position sensor, and it's going to be that SMG pump itself. So the lines are really not worth you know, trying to save. Obviously, we're not going to cut them, but we're not really going to try to be very careful by like, you know, not really messing with them. So right now, I'm actually removing this whole assembly. Uh, I'm not opening up the hydraulic system unless I have to. So right now, I'm just going to take off this entire assembly for the whole gear shifting mechanism, um, and then also remove all of these lines just off of the transmission. Just put them to the side. That way, we can release the transmission from the car. All right, we've got the slave cylinder out, or not out fully, just unhooked. It's actually very wet. That might be oil though. Might be from like the rear main seal or oil pan gasket, which is obviously leaking pretty bad. Now we've got to get this gear position sensor assembly off, and then we can start draining the transmission fluid and then taking off all the bell housing bolts and then pull the whole thing off. So the roll pin or dowel pin that holds this gear, uh, that whole gear mechanism to that, that holds the whole gear mechanism is pretty much rusted on there and it seized, so I couldn't get it out. So I did end up having to just take off all these lines, which sucks because I don't want it just sitting here dripping the whole time, but I guess we could just put them back on after. All right, let's see how this transmission fluid smells. Hopefully, it's nice and clean. Oh, that's not good. What? It's a lot of metal that just came out. You can see all those flakes coming out. There's so many flakes. Look at my gloves. 
You see all those flakes? Right here? That's all synchros and internals. Oh, look, you can see right here how bad it is. You see all that? That's so bad. It's not even like fine particles. It's like it's actually, you can feel the grit. And this never happens on SMG transmissions. Yeah, all those shiny gold flakes. And a little bit. All right, so the transmission is ready to come out now. Only thing we need to do is just remove the transmission mount and then we're just gonna manhandle this thing out. Grab this. All right, ready? Push out. Go. All right, both of us lift and then we twist. Oh, there it goes. All right, get out now. Let's put it on the ground. We're gonna tilt it back to normal. Yeah. That was such a pain, oh my God. Yeah, cause it's so greasy. You can't even get a good grip anywhere. Everything else was seized because it's never been taken off before. Honestly, I don't think they've done any maintenance on this car besides oil changes. Man. All right, so I think we're gonna take a break and then we'll get this bell housing off and get it prepped. So we've got the transmission off now and now all we really need to do is we need to separate this bell housing from the rest of the transmission. And what that's gonna allow us to do is we're gonna be able to send this out to a machine shop. We need to get a couple of holes drilled right here and then we also need to add all of the mechanism that allows the shifter to center. So there's like gates and stuff, detents, all of that. We need to add all that stuff onto this bell housing because this is the SMG bell housing, so they just have these uh, in the cast, they're just like little holes, but they're not all the way through. And we need to also add a lip or thread the end of this to put a cap on it. I will show you guys all of this stuff and the dimensions and all that stuff as well in the actual SMG conversion video that goes over this whole process. And also, we're gonna start removing the rest of this stuff right here. So I've got some of it off, I got it off on the car. Um, the rest of the stuff is just getting this pin out. This pin was really stuck on there which is why I wasn't able to pull off this whole assembly. And that's why I had to you know, unhook all of these hydraulic lines. But before we can take the bell housing off, we need to remove the, the guide tube, the throw out bearing and the clutch fork, all that stuff. We're gonna take all of that out first. And you wanna make sure that you have your transmission fluid drained pretty good. And you wanna make sure you have a way of you know, using like a soft rubber mallet or something to pull this bell housing off because this section right here where it mates to the rest of the transmission has to be a very tight seal. So you don't want any nicks or anything like that on there so you can't really pry against it. So we're just gonna start with this throwout bearing. Here's the throwout bearing, clutch fork, it's really oily in here. We're gonna take off this guide tube next. There's the guide tube. You can see how much oil and just grease and everything is built up on here. We're gonna be cleaning all of that once we get the bell housing back. And that pretty much concludes the stuff right here. This is the input shaft seal. And I would recommend replacing that as well because when you're pulling off this bell housing, when it goes to the machine shop, I mean, there's chance that there's gonna be, you know, dirt and stuff getting stuck on there. And just overall, it's just a good idea to replace it anyways. Now we're gonna remove this bell housing section. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit so we don't get really much debris falling inside. But as you guys saw earlier in this video, there was quite a bit of metal in this fluid. Um, so we're gonna find out if it's actually, how bad it really is inside. Hopefully it's not too bad, but 
we're prepared for the worst. But I mean, that's one good thing with these transmissions. We can get, we can get another SMG transmission for fairly cheap. The real money on these transmissions are the factory manual ones because obviously you don't have to convert any of the bell housing or anything like that. And people even just sell those manual bell housings by themselves. So, you know, if you don't want to get it machined or anything like that, you can always check the classifieds, eBay, whenever people grenade their transmissions, the bell housing is probably still going to be okay. All right, now these are probably going to be a little tight on there. It's really hard to get like a impact or anything like that on there. So we're just going to use socket and a mallet. Make our own impact. This transmission is so slimy from that oil leak. Who knows how long that oil's been leaking. And that's one thing, the M3s really don't leak that often. I mean, you'll see so many examples of E46 M3s with like 140, 150,000 miles. And they'll probably just barely be seeping any oil from the uh, oil pan gasket or anything like that. The main oil leak is usually from that CPV O-ring, which we have a video that goes over that as well. And it'll be linked down below. Let's scoot it over this. So whenever it leaks, it'll be on the doggy diaper. So we've got all of the bolts out except for this one because the fill plug is in the way. But now we're just going to tap the bell housing out slightly. And as it moves and separates, we'll take this bolt out. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is there are a couple of washers and uh, bearing kind of things that are inside that might fall out. So you kind of want to do it like this. That way, even if it falls out, it's just going to go straight down instead of, you know, falling into the transmission where you have to dig it out. But even if it does fall in, you can fish it out. So if that does happen to you, it's not that big of a deal. And I'll show you guys the orientation of everything on whenever we're putting this bell housing back on. They fall out. Mm -hmm. There's one. There we go. So there's not really an orientation you have to worry about with these. They just go in right here. So they just go in like this. You put this pin through and then you have the, that little washer looking thing on each side of this and same thing on this way. So another pin goes this way. It's a little bit more difficult when you're putting it back together than it is right now. But one trick that I like to use when you're putting it back together is you just pretty much like tack, make it tacky with grease. So you clean all that up and then you just put a lot of grease on it and the grease will just hold it in place. But here is the bell housing and pretty much the modifications we're going to be making are all going to be right here where this casting is. So you're going to have the detents come through right here. Cause you can see right now, it's not really, there's no way to center like there's nothing that's going to hold the shifter in the middle when you're, when you're in neutral. You need a gate to go to first and a gate to go to fifth and also a gate to go to reverse. Um, so the first one's actually kind of, it does it by itself, but reverse, that's one of the main ones and fifth and sixth gate is also another one. So we're going to be putting another one of these kind of little dowels, a spring in here, a shifter detents, drilling out these holes either threading the outside of this or putting like a, a channel with like a T-bit so you can put a snap ring to hold everything in place with the seal. So it's gonna be quite a few modifications to make this look, you know, like a manual bell housing. Uh, but for right now, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna remove these sensors so they don't get damaged and just clean up the bell housing a little bit, you know, for the machine shop. But that's it for this video. You know, we pretty much got everything that we need to do taken care of. 
And I know a lot of people will say you can machine these out yourself. You just need like a drill press or you can even do it with the drill at home. And yes, if it was my car that I don't plan on selling, which I don't sell any of my cars. So if I was doing it on one of my cars, I would just do it with the drill press and just use a tap to make those threader ports and stuff. But this is a customer's car and you don't know if he ends up selling the car to somebody or whatever happens, you know, we want it documented like it was done properly. Um, because, you know, with the drill or a drill press, if you have even a little bit of run out and you hollow out those holes more than it needs to be, it has to be exactly to the spec because there's a sleeve that sits in there and a detent that sits in there. You also want the spring to be exactly the, you know, the spring rate that it needs to be. That way it's not too easy to get into reverse or it's not too hard to get into reverse. And if any of those little machining items are off, you know, a little bit, it can cause issues and you're not going to see those issues because all that stuff gets covered. And in order to even access any of this, you have to pull the whole transmission back off. So, you know, that's just the risk that it's not worth it for, you know, for me to do it for somebody else. If it was my car, like I said, it's not a big deal. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog style of taking all this stuff off and I will get back to you guys in the next one. And make sure you subscribe, like the video, turn on that bell notification so you guys get to see more videos on this car. We've got quite a few cool projects going on right now, so we're going to be posting about everything as progress gets made. And also make sure you go follow us on Instagram at ShopLifeTV, and we always have regular, more regular updates on there as well. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in our next video.